Hey guys, welcome back to another video. Today we're going to be talking about getting an iPad for sixth form or A levels or whatever, and if I'd recommend doing so, and the positives and perhaps the negatives as well. If you just want an answer straight up off the bat, I would say that it really depends on the type of person that you are. I know that's not really the best of advice, but um, I personally do recommend getting an iPad, but it just really depends on what you're trying to get out of it. And I also did put a post on this to see what questions you guys may have, so I'm going to try and answer them today as well, and hopefully you can can sort of get an idea whether or not this might be something for you that you might want to invest in and yeah let's just get straight on with it. It is without saying that getting an iPad or anything similar is expensive and for me I see it as an investment because it genuinely helps a lot throughout sixth form but it really just depends again I'm gonna go over a few of the things that it depends on but I over here the one I have is the iPad Pro 12.9 inch fourth generation that's the one I have here but you don't need to get that one you can get any type of iPad you can go for the cheaper ones the larger ones the smaller ones it's really depending on your own budget and what you want to get out of it and I'm personally not that experienced in the different like generations of iPads and like all the different models and brands and designs so for that you can easily find other videos where people go over the advantages of like the iPad Air compared to the iPad Pro and things like that because um, it, it really just depends on what you can afford it's something you're probably gonna have to do a bit of research on yourself and see if you are planning to get an iPad or what sort of one you should get because I mean the iPad Pro is really good don't get me wrong but I mean I don't have any other experience with other type of ones so I can't really say if it's the best one to get if that makes any sense. I want to start off with saying what I use my iPad for at school so mainly what I do with my iPad is making notes because I like writing notes and being able to do it on my iPad it's just really nice because obviously you don't have to bring around heavy books with you everywhere and you can store everything so much more easily as well. All my documents and things are online I don't need to worry about them whereas if I I had it on pen and paper I have the problem of perhaps forgetting a book or something like that I mean sure you could forget your iPad to school but I always make sure I have it it's just difficult to forget but like something like a book for a subject I have everything all in here I literally don't carry any books because all my textbooks are online and all my notes are online and all my flashcards everything are online so it's all on this iPad and so it just makes everything so much nicer and whenever I have a test I usually scan it on my iPad and then I can throw away the test after that that or whenever I have a worksheet to do I scan it on my iPad I do it on the iPad it's just like I have complete peace of mind and knowing that everything is on this iPad and like it just saves so much time in the long run and it just makes everything so much more organized automatically whereas with a piece of paper you're gonna have to get folders and things if you have everything online it's just automatically organized and it's so much easier to find things obviously you're gonna have to put folders and things online but it's so much easier to take care of and be able to manage and obviously when you're making notes online you can always move around edit it change it up it's just it's really useful and I personally like the aspect of making notes online but I don't like typing them because I don't retain much of the information when I type it and when I'm writing it I can make like diagrams and things really easily so that's the main reason I myself have an iPad and it works very very well in terms of what note taking software I use good notes and it is paid you have to pay for it but it is really really worth it like if you are able to get it please please get it. if you get an iPad GoodNotes is very very worth it because once you've gotten the app you don't have anything else to pay for so you don't have all these ads interrupting you whilst you're making notes and things and you don't need to worry about any sort of like subscription and things it's just a one-off payment and then you have it and it's really really effective in making notes on as well I might make a video on how I make notes specifically on my iPad but I basically just use GoodNotes during the lesson and I'd scribble down everything the teacher's saying and then on a new document one with my entire like topic list I would then polish up all the notes if that makes sense. I've got more information about that on my A-level workflow video. One problem a lot of people don't want to get an iPad is because once you get an iPad you're gonna have to get an Apple Pencil and you're gonna have to get a keyboard but as you can see um, my Apple Pencil here is just like this off brand that I got from Amazon and it is it does the job it's like it's much cheaper than the actual thing but it still works really well and in terms of this keyboard over here I don't use a keyboard on my iPad that much when I did French I used to type a lot of things up on Google Docs but with biology chemistry and maths it's all just like writing things especially in maths I'm always scribbling down equations and things you can't really type any of that and for biology and chemistry I'm usually writing things down unless it's a long definition I'd usually just get the keyboard out and 
quickly type it up and that way I save time but most of the time I'm writing down with an Apple Pencil I mean I call it an Apple Pencil it's not but it still does the job really well and the keyboard I have is also an off-brand that I got from Amazon too because like it's not worth getting the real thing I mean if you can afford it even then like you don't need it unless the subjects that you do require a lot of typing but in that case just get a laptop and that's another thing I want to kind of go over because a lot of people go should I get a MacBook or an iPad? And that's one of the comments that I got as well from my post I sent. I would say that overall, let's say you don't have a laptop or anything at home and you're thinking of getting either just an iPad or just a MacBook, I would say a MacBook would be a better option in that case because you can do so much more on a MacBook compared to an iPad. But for me, once I got into year 12, I already had an iMac at home, which I'd use for all like the typing and the flashcard making usually, and like all the main revision that I'd do at home would be on that. So then I got an iPad to a company at school rather than another laptop-like device, if that makes sense. So what I'd say is if you're deciding between a laptop or an iPad, or a tablet of some sort, you go for a laptop if you don't have any sort of device at home already because you can do so much more on a laptop unless you really do want to make everything written, handwritten on an iPad, then okay, yeah, sure. But even then, I would say that like getting a laptop is more useful in that sense. But if you already have something at home, then getting an iPad really, really helps in terms of like accompanying it and um, just it's good for score. It's like really useful to like pull out during lessons and just make notes and do exercises and worksheets on and past papers as well. So, so useful. I don't need to print any past papers out or any questions. I just do them straight on the iPad and I can store them more easily and I can like mark them and highlight different parts and like flag different papers that I didn't do as well in so all of that is just so seamless and so nice and I have an iPhone as well I have an iMac it's all this nice integrated ecosystem so I'd copy something on my iPad it would go straight to my iMac and everything's just so nicely integrated so it's just really satisfying and really efficient in that sense so I have another comment here saying if there's a cheaper alternative to getting an iPad um well I would say that like you don't have to go for the newer iPad you don't have to go for the iPads that are like really expensive you can literally go for a second-hand one or find a really cheap version or a really small one so I'd say yeah I mean you don't need to get an iPad specifically you don't need to get Apple you could get like those other tablets where you can write notes on and things as well it, it just depends on what your preference is I'm personally quite an Apple person I already have an iPhone it just makes everything so much easier when I have an iPad along with it and the last question here I have is if all six forms would allow an iPad to be used during lessons now I don't know about that I think you're gonna have to see with the sixth form. For us, from the very beginning, they told us that you're allowed to bring in any sort of devices. Actually, you're encouraged to bring in devices to help with your revision. So I'd say that it's probably allowed. I don't know why it wouldn't be allowed, but I, I think you're just gonna have to check with your school because um, the most important part of having an iPad for me is the fact that it makes life at school so much easier. So if you can't even use it at school, I, I would say that half of its utility value is from using it at school. And obviously it saves a lot of paper. I can always do like quick questions on the iPad. It's like a mini whiteboard now. It's just really easy to share things with as well. So if I have someone needing help for a question, I can do the working out on my iPad and I can just instantly share it. All in all, I recommend getting an iPad if you already have some sort of like laptop or something. But if you are planning on choosing between an iPad and a laptop, I would say your best bet is to stick with a laptop. It just depends on the subjects you do as well. If you do maths and further maths, I would say an iPad is going to help you a lot uh, because you're probably going to be using a lot and a lot of paper to do practice questions on. Doing past paper practice you can do on the iPad much easily as well. Now if you do get an iPad it's not like you're just going to instantly pass all your exams. It still requires a considerable amount of effort and that effort can only come from you. So whether or not you have an iPad or a laptop or just using paper you can get the same grades no matter what as long as you put that hard work in and that effort in. The reason you use different devices is more to make that process of revising more efficient for yourself and perhaps even a bit easier because you can do things more related to how you like revising so I like drawing and things having an iPad for me works great something like a laptop for me wouldn't work as well because I can't really draw things as easily on that I'd have to use like a mouse and that just doesn't really work okay let me just give you a list of pros and cons about getting an iPad for six form your notes can be handwritten but still digital and that way you can share it with other people very easily and you can send it to your teachers and things really really quickly and seamlessly it doesn't require any sort of effort you can store all sorts of documents whether it's worksheets past papers 
practice questions, anything. Just having things that you work on, you can do that on an iPad so much easily. Drawing on an iPad just feels really nice. I don't know why this might be something of my own personal preference, but it's just really nice to do and it's just really satisfying and it just makes making notes a bit more enjoyable for me. You can multitask very easily. It's got like split screen view and things as well, which you can find on a laptop too, but I just like the way it works on iPad. You can make it very effective and efficient. You can screenshot things very quickly and just drag and drop them in. It's just that all the gestures and things are very, very useful. You don't waste paper. I mean, that's just quite an obvious one, but you can do as much practice as you like and you don't need to worry about wasting anything. You don't need to bring in much stationery because everything you do is on the iPad. So you can just get like colors and stuff on that and you don't need to really bring in highlighters and things like that. You'd probably only need a pen and a pencil. If you have an iPhone, it's just so seamless the way you can airdrop photos. And if you literally just copy on your phone, you can paste it on your iPad and you can get away with playing games a bit more easily as well. You didn't hear that from me. Now downsides, I know that I didn't probably mention every single good side about the pros, but the cons, it's expensive. I mean, that's quite obvious. You're going to have to get accessories. Just getting the iPad by itself won't do it. You're going to have to get like an Apple Pencil and probably a keyboard as well and a screen protector. The screen protector I use is the Belmont screen protector, by the way. It's like a better version of Paperlike. I prefer it and it's a bit cheaper as well. Using GoodNotes also costs money or I think Notability also has some sort of subscription as well. So either way, you're going to have to spend money or you're going to be stuck with a plan that might not be the most effective to make notes on. Now this one's quite specific to me, but using things like Google Docs and Google Slides is really difficult to do on iPad because it's not very well formatted. It's not very easy to like edit things and just move stuff about. So that's why I do most of my stuff on GoodNotes, just like handwriting it. But if you ever need to like type things and format things like that, it can be very difficult sometimes. If you forget to charge it, I mean, you're kind of screwed because if everything's on it, if you forget or you forget to charge it, then you, you can't access anything. And yeah, that's all the downsides I can think of. So overall, I would say that you should get an iPad if you can, but if you can't, it's not the end of the world. There's so many other alternatives as well. So yeah, I hope you found this video somewhat useful. I hope it makes it easier for you to make a decision if you are thinking of getting one or not. And yeah, if you have any other questions, leave them down below in the comments. I'll see you again next time. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Make sure you like it and subscribe if you haven't already. And yeah, bye for now.